So welcome to the Town of Deerfield uh, Select Board Board of Health meeting for August 10th, 2022, time is 6 p.m. Uh, this is a hybrid meeting, Zoom and main meeting room here at the uh, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Uh, meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held uh, remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with Governor Baker's June 16, 2021 Act extending certain provisions, uh, certain COVID-19 measures and uh, adopted during the state of emergency, including extension of the remote participation provisions of its March 20th, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Chap uh, general law chapter 30A section 20. Um, there's a, on our town website, you'll see an agenda uh, for this meeting and there you can also get the Zoom link. There's also a toll-free number if you'd like to call into the meeting. Uh, the number is 833-548-0276. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580. And should you need a passcode, it's 570012. And on that agenda, you'll see the link for the Zoom meeting. Meeting attendees should mute their phones unless speaking. Um, that's star six for landlines. Um, unless asking questions or commenting and all attendees should wait to speak until other participants are finished. So I'll call the meeting to order. Um, first part of business would be the uh, public comment. If there's any we have no public here, any public online? No, well, that was fast. Um, <laughs> do we have any- uh, Don't drink the meeting. No, I know, right? <laughs> uh, so I think we're, we're good there. Um, uh, no scheduled, hearings or appearances at the moment. Um, any select board reports or announcements? Anybody want to talk about anything they've been working on or doing? Or? Well, Tim probably wants to talk about the sewer, but we can do that later. Okay. That's part of, yeah. Yeah, whatever. That's part of here. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So yep. I'm, I'm just think? a quick um, sure. update on, I've been looking into various aspects of repairing the church. Um, most recently I met with just to explore, not committing us to anything, obviously, of course. but just to explore uh, whether um, the roof of the church, assuming it's uh, structurally sound, um, would be a good location for solar for, for the campus. Okay. Um, and so Big roof. Northeast Solar came and they're gonna just give me a proposal sometime this week, which I will then send to Casey for sharing. Um, they're aware that if we did move ahead with something like this, that we would go through a public bidding process. Of course. So this would just give us an idea of what's possible there, what a rough cost would be. Um, as part of that process, we went into the basement, looked at the electrical panels in the uh, main church proper. Mm -hmm. um, they're damp and rusted. And yeah. so obviously this would be an opportunity to upgrade the, the electrical system in the church, which is part of a plan for renovating right. the structure whenever we do it anyway. Yep. So I just wanted to Thank let everyone know. That. Yep. That's great. I mean, it's a big roof and um, yep. half of it facing south. And yeah, it's a, he said it's ideal because there's no trees. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's well situated um, and it could be as much as like 45, 45 kilowatt system, which is would produce quite a bit of energy. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Good. That's great. Thank you for doing that. Um, anything else anybody have? No? Um, do, just under Board of Health, do you want to mention the um, the COVID vaccine clinic? I think yes. that's coming up, right? That's, yes. The COVID uh, vaccine clinic is August 26, 3 to 7 at the Deerfield Elementary School. Um, we are trying to schedule senior flu clinic uh, September 23rd and September 30th at the senior center. Um, the recommendation from the CDC is anyone over 65 should probably have the high dose. Okay. And then we're going to um, have a drive through, I hope, at the highway garage on the 16th of October. Okay. And we might have to do it Saturday, the 15th, but we're, you know, generally we have best luck on the su Sunday. So mm. we and are trying for Sunday, the 16th. Is that a holiday weekend? No, no it's, it's not. The, week, the, weekend the weekend after. Oh, perfect. Um, 
Great, people are way. Uh, yeah. Indigenous people there. Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. Good. Um, and for the COVID vaccine, do you need to sign up, or can you just show up, or what do you, you can what's just best show to up? Do? But okay. we would like people to um, sign up because that gives us allows us to make sure we have enough vaccinators. Okay. Um, and the the thing that people should should know is that Pfizer is starting the trials for their new Omicron specific booster, but it's probably not gonna be available till late fall. So if, if you, there's a huge difference between the third, having a third shot, third booster, or you know, a booster, first mm -hmm. booster, and a, and a second booster, your fourth shot. Uh, you know, it's somewhere around less than 7%, um, the Omicron are being evasive of persons that have had four shots it's almost 20% if you've only had three. Ah. So if you've, if it's really been five or six months since you've had a booster, get another booster, and then you'll be okay to get the Omicron specific one when it mm. comes out sometime later, you know, you're, you'll be closer yeah. to the five or six month. And, and that's supposed to be more durable, but you know, who knows. And I think a lot of us, um, myself, I had the, J and J, and then I got a booster. So a lot of people only have two shots. You know, I don't know how because that was the J and J was a one and done kind of thing. I think, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you know, so there's probably a lot well, of people out there had, that are like that. My husband that. had the J and J, and then yep. I made him get two Moderna ones. Yeah, I, the second was a Moderna for me, and I, I'm probably ready for a second. Yes, so maybe I'll come into uh, that. I, I, so. there, there, the problem is I, here. I've been talking about. The 2.75, BA 2.75 is going to mm -hmm. come when we're just going to open up school. Well, the 4.6, BA 4.6 is coming out of the Midwest and Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, Nebraska. It's already in a week. It's 10% of their cases. I wow. mean, this is unreal. And it is it's proving to be very transmissible. It's proving to be very evasive of our immunity, whether it's natural immunity, if you've had COVID a couple times or once, and and also you've been shots. I mean, it's if you have your vaccination, you will have hopefully mild right. symptoms. You're not going to wind up in the However, hospital. it's just it's so important because we are seeing, you know, people are saying it's around twenty percent. Who knows really? But long haul long haul COVID is serious. And once you have COVID, every time you get COVID, you have another higher chance to get long haul symptoms. And it's and it this is a disability bubble for all of us. It's mm. gonna it's just gonna burst. It's gonna be a nightmare for this country. Right. So people have got to be careful. Be and careful. yep. I, this seems like you are seeing an uptick. I mean, obviously we don't have, we're not contact tracing anymore. You know, you don't no, really- No, we are contact Well, I mean, what I'm saying they, is like- the numbers. No, we don't have the numbers. We don't, we don't have the numbers like we used to be able to right. see. So, and people are taking the box home and getting tested and, you know, doing their thing. And it's hard to really know, but I just, I know a lot of people who have had it The recently, hospitalizations so. are pretty stable. stable. Yeah. No, they're up. Oh. But they've been stable at around seven a day, mm -hmm. which- is a lot more than our one or two from a few months ago. Right. But, you know, you just, you just, you, the, the thing that seems to be, you just need to space. Mm -hmm. So you're not breathing on each other and we have to work on ventilation. Um, yep. There, there isn't any, that was fine. from that was a behavioral fine. point of view, there isn't anything that we can really okay. do because we can't mandate masks. Right. So, yep. Right. Just people have just to pay to attention. On yeah. Um, on the bright side, because it's been so extremely dry, we have yes. no menorah mosquitoes, so we're not going to have triple E. This is so exciting. Yeah, it's very good um, news. However, West Nile is creeping out. It's in Central Mass now. It's coming from the uh, eastern part of the state, and it's container Kulix container mosquitoes. So, in mm -hmm. other words, if you are watering your plant and you have in your plant dish leftover water. That's enough to have the Kulix. Right. So please you patrol your dump, yard. Dump tires. Dump, dump anything that holds stagnant. water um, mm -hmm. so that there's no ability for them to breed. Kevin has been wonderful. Our, unfortunately, when you have our, you know, our boxes, um, 
tree boxes out mm -hmm. here. It's wonderful for green community, but it has hold water. So right. Kevin is putting discs in there, dunks Good. in there, the BTI, and he's making sure our catch basins are treated because what's happening is because water is scarce, they are going to those places. Right. And so by Kevin treating them, hopefully we'll have a third year of no West Nile in Deerfield. Good. Because Kevin has been doing a really, really good job. So just want thank to you. thank Kevin and continue putting them out, Kevin. Yep. <laughs> anything else? And Alex, you want to hit on anything? Do you yeah, uh, we are still doing um, Tuttle 5. So septic is warring still. Just did a perk this morning. Good. Um, and is that new new buildings going up or is it um, no it's mostly like repairs there's only one new uh perk for new construction uh the other day on sand gully yeah um i saw them clearing that and lot. uh mm -hmm. actually river road as well okay um by uh 555 river road yep. and, um new assignment of 127 sand gully road uh so um working on that uh, you know, witnessing Title V inspections as well. Um, and everything seems to be okay. No, no issues on that front. Um, Good. Treehouse re reached out to me about um, what's going on um, with the food trucks. They apparently they're just telling me that their uh, kitchen staff is, um, you know, there, there's a shortage and that um, there's a big, you know, a, you know, big um, desire to have the, the, the pizza but if they can't, they don't have enough of the staff or whatnot, then um, they would like to go ahead and um, provide some food trucks to go ahead right. and meet the demand and the need of that business uh, yeah. activity. So uh, we're working with, um, you know, with uh, Treehouse and just saying, yep, these are the applications, this is the process. Uh, so it's been uh, going very well. Mm -hmm. um, and Let's see, so that's food. I, so catching up on food inspections, I uh, just did the school inspections last week. Um, Good. All the, the schools, also all the schools are done. Great, yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah, everything's opening up pretty quick here. Oh yeah, and, and Jeff McDonald, the, the uh, super, uh, the, the food dining director uh, was just telling me that uh, there could be a little different um, uh, set up for um, Deerfield Elementary School and stuff like that. So we're going to do like a mini food plan review uh, and Good. whatnot. Uh, so keep you guys in the loop. Uh, and that's I know see. those kitchens need a lot of work. You know, I mean, they're on, um, they're they're on, on the, the capital, capital plan, plan for yeah. sure. So yeah. I know, but it's just such a tight spot. They're going to have to, I don't know how they're going to pull that off. But right. Alex is going to work with them. Good. Yeah. And he's, he's also working with Eagle Brook yep. for yeah. their temporary. And I think we yeah. got, we funded a dishwasher, right? Because yes. we want to make yes. sure those were hot last yeah. meeting. Yep. Yeah. And then okay, uh, I think a walk-in refrigerator too mm -hmm. for That's one of right. the schools. So Frontier. yeah, there's just been great uh, communication in that regard. Yep. Um, been doing i just did a pool inspection at eagle brook yep. um looks great good fantastic thank you um and uh uh in regards to housing uh, just a few pending items um about to be closed out uh nothing new that's come up um in that regard and uh we we have received a few um uh, food establishment uh, applications, new ones, um, and uh, we're, we're reviewing that and making sure um, mm -hmm. that's good. And uh, that's pretty much it. Good. Um, that I can think of right now. Oh, uh, yes, that's it. Great. Thank you. Well, we had a NATO meeting um, and you submitted for the first uh, period for the... Yep. So that's due August 15th. And... Um, I'm just waiting for the finalized um, information about the laptop, and then I'll be able to submit that uh, report out and um, and meeting all the deliverables, and then we should be able to uh, get that paycheck. Good. Um, and uh, yeah, it's exciting. All right. Oh, and then I just want to note PCR testing. Um, I talked with the curative staff uh, this morning, and um, we're doing about 20 a week. Um, over there at the senior center, uh, at the old senior center, uh, 67 North Main Street. So, yeah, you know, it, it's, um, I know, I know that going. we, what? They're, gonna, they're willing to keep, to keep yeah, going. yeah. I okay. mean, it's, it's steady. They're telling me, they're telling me that Greenfield um, 
has, you know, the top spot in the region, you know, as expected, you know, there's a greater population, so greater need. Um, and the other locations are doing well as well. So, you know, there's clearly still a need that people, you know, want that reassurance and uh, getting a, a gold standard diagnostic and whatnot. Um, Do we still have tests here? So unfortunately, we, we, we ran out of the at-home antigen tests. Um, it went like hotcakes, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, <laughs> they did. It was, you know, it was a good service to people. And um, any chance to get any more of those, or are they done? Uh, I can reach out to the state and see what we well, can do. Well, you actually have reached out already. Yeah. I asked him to reach out. Yeah. We're on the wait list to get some more. Yeah. yeah. Kind of. Yeah. We'll see what we'll, we'll see what the state can come up starts. with. Yeah, I yeah. think I don't I don't think the Commonwealth will fail us in uh, providing um, mitigation strategies. And well, I'm glad you have so. faith in them. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, so no no minutes today, but we're working on those. Yeah, and we had to, I had some yep corrections I need yep, to work with. That's Alex. fine. Um, so um, discussion items. We with the first, I know Julie is here. waiting in the wings here. We've got the eighteen eighty eight building uh, OPM contract for review and approval. Um, welcome, Julie. How are you? I am fine. How are you? How are you? Hi, Julie. Can you guys hear me? So, um, mm -hmm. do you want to give an update at all on on the contract or anything you want to add? I, mean, I did read through those. Um, there's nothing really earth shattering. Um, we went to them, the, kind of the process, we went to them and asked for um, uh, pricing for the scope of work that was in the contract and they came back with pricing and it was fine. And so it's presented yep. to you in front of you. Um, we did go back, so they gave us a kind of a not to exceed on each of the um, uh, each of the tasks in the phase one of the contract. Yep. Um, and then we went back to them and asked for them also for um, hourly pricing for the individuals that would be working with us in case there was work that came up that was beyond the um, identified tasks that were in the phase one there. Yeah. Um, there is a phase two. Go ahead, what? I saw it could be a lump sum or an hourly, depending on what, what they find they need. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, there is a phase two in the contract, and that's not included in this pricing. So we will go back and um, negotiate that at that point. Okay. Um, but the way the bid was written and the contract is written, um, we um, we can go back to them and ask them if we like working with them. And we also have the option to go out and ask, you know, do a new bid and find somebody else if we don't like them. I don't expect not to like them, right. um, but we are, um, we do have that better, that uh, ability. Great. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Um, I would make a motion that uh, the chair sign this contract. Any any other questions or anything? Do I have a second for that? I'll second it. Team any, Hilchi. any other discussions on the contract or any questions on it at all? No, Julie just answered my one. One of the I questions think, I had was, you know, if I there was a way to, if we, we, if they proved not to be. Yeah, I think all, all three. three will sign this oh, one all too. Three? Yep. Okay. Yep. Motion to have all three. Oh, sign. then I'll make yep. a motion that all three of us sign. Okay. I'll second I, that. Didn't, uh, I thought we were going to switch to every. To yeah, there is a couple it. like that, but this one we can all do apparently. Okay. So, okay. And uh, no further discussion. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. So. Thank you, Julie, for doing such a good work. Absolutely. We I'm, have two I'm copies excited. to sign, too. Okay. Um, there's something highlighted on the end. Do I, there's a final, go yeah, out. that's something else. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Julie. Yes. Why Julie's here, um, is it possible that, um, 
we could jump down to the grant writing. Of course, um, yeah. Because I think I feel like the 1888 building and the church are related to this. Oh, grant writing services for upcoming round of community one stop underutilized yeah, buildings. Underutilized buildings. Okay. Is that is there something in the packet about it or not? No, no actually I think it was, it was a, just discussion. It was a discussion point Tim had asked me to add. Okay. So there is an opportunity for us to retain services of a grant writer, Julie, um, that we've utilized for our last community one stop application. Her name is Alice Rich Lewis. Um, I think Tim you had some thoughts about the church so i'll shut up and let you talk oh well um basically the idea is that the, the next time that we can apply for for money through the the uh, one, stop. one stop one stop is december so that we um i'd like to get a fully realized round of um estimates for the various things that need to be fixed to make the church usable the whole structure and um, and then see where that fits in with the money that's available through one stop through this underutilized buildings. Um, and Alice, I think the understanding is she's going to look into whether this building would qualify for me. So that's basically where we are. Okay. Anything else you want to just? Well, I guess. So my forward. question is, did you want Julie to sort of? Well, I just want to make sure that estimate? Julie. Um, was aware of this because you know this is i feel like this is a, a wonderful way for us to access some money um absolutely so the the we need to do anyway. 1888 building and the church are both on absolutely underutilized mm -hmm. and they're both need help right so i can't see that we wouldn't be able to take advantage of this program but it's like how and right. what's the best best way to do it and that and alice is really sharp and easy to work with and you know denise mason and casey have been working with her on other She's grants mm -hmm. she evaluates the situation really well for us and um, gives us you know an idea of whether we should be moving forward whether it's worth our investment right um you know she's the one that evaluated some of the federal programs that we were a little leery yeah. of and you know, she just verified that we should be wary of. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like it's a good investment mm -hmm. and we just got to, there is money out there. We just got to keep putting it out yeah. that we need the money and money will come. So yep. having, this is a small, small investment. And yeah. if it looks like we're going to run out of money to keep having her um, gainfully employed to search for money for us, then uh, you know it's something I want to see addressed in the um, warrant for our special town meeting. Okay. You know, an extra few thousand dollars. I yeah, mean, it's, we're well, not it's good investments big for big money. Right, for getting good big money. She is extremely inexpensive for the return that we get. Right. And it's a huge lift um, off Casey's shoulders um, to mm -hmm. have somebody working in a she's, corner. She's very responsive. Yeah. So, um, and I wanted Julie to be aware of it. So that was why I wanted to discuss it while you yeah. were still here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sounds good. Um, did you I did see it on the or just consensus? I think it's just consensus. consensus. Yep, okay, we're good. All right. All right. Thank you, Julie. Thanks, Julie. Thanks for all your work. Appreciate your time. Appreciate it. Hi, Julie. Thanks, Julie. Um, this next item is the CCC licensing for Ember Gardens. Um, so that is the confirmation that Ember Gardens has put in. This is the confirmation the select board chair, whoever's authorized to sign, sends back to the C Cannabis Control Commission that acknowledges Ember Gardens is in compliance with the town's bylaws and requirements. We've yeah. produced those. I think we've done three of them since I got here. Yep. Um, this seems a little bit different setup, Casey. Is there? It's because of the new um, law that was passed. 
on the host community agreements. There's a, there is a, you'll see in there the, um, the act relative to equity, equity in cannabis industry, which is um, Lisa Mead's office kind of put out a summary of the act and how it affects host community agreements. And I haven't thoroughly gone through it, um, but I think that they had set up the community host agreement for um so that's a different community host oh agreement. right we've different already item. done ember gardens ember yeah. gardens is is done Correct. this is but really this confirming is... that the town has complied with that the ember gardens is working with the town to comply that's this sheet yes, yes. correct yes and then um well i i just don't remember seeing this set up before yeah, and that's just in our packet. It's not yeah, so public, that's the application. There's some, there's some confidential information in that. Okay. Um, but essentially, it gives you the principles and and the okay. the basic makeup of the company. And all it, right. And we are, um, you know, they have met all of our requirements oh, right. for a host agreement. Right. So I, I didn't have any problem. It yep. just this looked different. I wasn't. Yeah, it looks very different. Okay. So this would be a motion to approve the chair to sign the uh, municipal. I'll, I will make that motion. No, I'll second it. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Tim Hilchie, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Yeah. That is good. Uh, and the Next item is the South Deerfield Wastewater Upgrades Project with the potential change order approval for signature. Um, Wait on that. Yeah, I was just gonna say that it was suggested that once the library folks got done oh, with their meeting welcome. arrived, that maybe we'd move them up. Sure, and we can do so that. don't have to hang around and Absolutely. listen to us. Because they're on uh, items they're, unanticipated, right? Exactly. Because we did not anticipate. All right. Yes, there's mics there, and I don't know how many want to sit, but sit. Welcome, this is the uh, Tilton Trustees and City Director. Um, want to state your name for the public and record? Hi, I'm Candace Bradbury Carlin, uh, Library Director. Welcome. And Nancy Maynard, and I'm the chair of the Tilton Fund. Great. Thank you. Welcome. So what would you like to tell us tonight? Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're, we're here. Um, we've had a very busy summer um, mm -hmm. and we're here to um, join in partnership in transparency because we've had a lot going on with the library project. You know, as you know, back in the spring, we had requested $25,000 to get a new estimate of the library project um, update of the cost. Um, so we, have worked with our OPM and architect to accomplish that. Um, we had hoped to have that number a couple of weeks ago. And when we had our first meeting with them, they found an error in their um, calculation spreadsheet. So okay. we wanted to make sure that we had an accurate number to go out to the public. Um, so we were able to finally get that confirmed this past week. And so we shared that number with the trustees at 5.30 right. um, in a Tilton Fund meeting. Yep. And so we're here to share that with you. Okay. Um, that number is now um, 12 million three. Um, 12 million three hundred thousand. Yes, yep. okay. right. Um, and of that number, um, the architect anticipates that approximately a little over $1 million could be CPA funds um, appropriations. Um, you know, we have no knowledge about what the CPA budgets are or what yep. money that's there, but just that we wanted to have that broken out in um, their calculation. Okay. Um, one of the things that they did do uh, when they went back, we asked if there were any areas when they were redoing the, the numbers Un, of unusual findings and they said no they're really very consistent with what they've been finding with other projects that they've been you know getting upgrades on right. um, but we wanted to just make sure about that um so um what they did do in this number is they have added 
a 7.5% um, escalation cost during mm -hmm. the building phase um, because they really wanted to make sure that we were um, appropriate with that number, right. um, especially given that we're rehabbing an old building and making sure that you know we just cover that rather than skimp on that and then come back and have issues down the road. Yep. And that was one of the things that they shared when the original project was done, you know, the escalation like were five back then. Um, three percent or three something five, like yeah. that. And those first three years, you know, escalations were even higher than that. And then oh, yeah. with what's happened over the past three years in the economy, you know, for sure, most of this is uh, is no surprise. No, nope, not at all. Um, so, you know, we um, have only had a very preliminary conversation mm. with our fundraising consultant. And so, you know, we're anticipating still that we can work on our $2 million to raise for the project. Yeah. Uh, we have 675,000 um, pledged committed. Um, so the next phase is we're gonna be working on uh, larger donors and those kinds of things. And that's sort of the work of the fall. Um, so we yeah. will, be required to secure funding by um, January, January 7th. Yep. 7th, 7th. Um, so um, we're anticipating, you know, hopefully there'll be a town meeting in the fall and then the vote, um, you know, and, and the November election um, right. so that we give the community and patrons the opportunity to make their say for, for the library project. Um, so we, felt was really important that you are the first people to know. Thank you. Appreciate that <laughs> um, very much. Congratulations. Candace yeah. has um, <laughs> some, had some handouts baby. for you oh, yeah. with um, information, you know, about the library. You know, the library is just in a really essential part of our community. Mm -hmm. And and we you know hope that the community continues to go forward with um, agreement on that. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's great. Nancy, okay. I just wanted to check. Um, you mentioned I think I heard you correctly to say that you asked the, the architects if there were any ways that you could shave costs or anything. Is that, or did, um, have you had that, that discussion? That didn't, didn't happen yet. Okay. Um, um, when they got the figures back, I mean, you know, we really felt that, you know, we just need the baseline piece there. And sure. then, we, you know, we really, that's, that's another next phase that, you know, we might be able to entertain with them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And do you have a do you have a timeline on when you'd like to achieve your goal of two million donations? Um, I think um, the fundraising consultant's goal is that hopefully we would be somewhere over the million mark by the time we would go for votes mm -hmm. um, okay. to be able to demonstrate the support of the project. Um, yeah. And many projects like this, you know, that fundraising. Mark would be throughout the whole project, um, you know, and, you know, he, he'll be the first person to tell you that many times once you start a project, you know, once you start to, you know, shovels in the ground, people think the project paid for and whatever, but, you know, right. we would, we would be continuing to work on that yeah. and um, really, you know, working with larger donors, the banks and community foundations and looking for grants, you know, yep. varieties of different things, all the things that we can do, because certainly right. we know that, the project is different, um, yeah. but we also know that you know the evaluation that he's done of the representatives of the town of uh, of Deerfield and you know what their financial capacity is. You know he mm -hmm. feels the two million is really the appropriate goal. Okay, great. Any questions? We good? Well, I I was worried that it was going to be a large number. Um, and like I said before, I had reached out to Westboro um, because their their project has escalated. Um, well, not as this is higher than um, this escalation is higher than what when I first talked to them. But I think that's what's going to happen. It's just going to escalate in, in the next six months. So this probably is not even enough. But um, I did reach out to Orange, uh, who was also in the same boat, and um, Jane Pierce, who is like board board of health person, um, you know that I've known for years. She she, you know, like myself, support the library, but there's just no ability to borrow this kind of money. So um, she's definitely excited about approaching the governor 
um, saying that our award was based on pre-COVID conditions. And I, I, you know, she's gonna talk to her library commissioners tonight uh, in a meeting. And I, I hope you will reach out to Orange and Westboro and whoever the fourth community is, because this, this is not, this is what ARPA money is for, is for COVID um, impacted awards and activities that happened. Um, and we are, our award is based on in 2017, just like Orange's and Westboro's pre-COVID. And we are now, you know, it's it, the escalator of 7.5 is just not enough. So when you go out to bid, you know, we're, we're gonna be short. Um, you know, the escalation uh, from my conversations is like 22%. So I well the escalation was about 53% over the right. 8 million and then they're probably thinking on top of that about seven and a half, seven and a half, seven and a half. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. For yeah. the first 18 months. For the first 18 months. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that's okay. and that's where you're getting the 22. Gotcha. 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 Okay. Yep. Right. So I I mean I feel like you know it's just we, we've, we've got to come up with something to make it work. I mean, we are supportive of the mm -hmm. library expansion, but you know, this kind of money, I mean, we, we can't even borrow it. So we need to do something. So I would hope that you would, you know, talk with the commission, library commissioners of the other towns, whoever the fourth town is, I don't even know who the fourth town is, but if, if we come, if we band together, and go to the governor right now in the next few weeks, there is money available that hasn't been all appropriated yet. Everybody's scrambling for it. The governor's trying to spend it. So let's make our case. This is what a legacy is to support libraries in, in Massachusetts and it's across the state. Do you know the other towns that are usually There's actually seven, seven, seven towns. Okay, yeah. they got awarded. Right. Yep. Yes, because um, initially there was only gonna be two, okay. Westboro and us. Right. And then they were able to get enough money to, because they want they want to work through this wait list because it's taking a long this time. Yes. And so sure. so they were able to give it to seven, so half the wait list. Um, and then there'll be seven left after that. Right. Yeah, I didn't um, bring and I list. don't know. I can get it. I can look online. And, Just yeah, curious who, I, who I, they were. And, um, if they're across the of... state, that's even better because then you're going having all the legislatures. I mean, Suzanne Whip is, um, you know, Orange's representative, and you know she she should be able to. She was a Republican, so before she disenrolled. So, you know, she has some conversations with the governor over the years. So I, I, I think we have a really good case we can make. To me, this is what ARPA money was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And we can, you know, if, if we collectively, if you can get at least five of the seven towns together and you go to the governor's office and say, we, we, this is an opportunity for you to have a legacy in our state. They all have to be. And in it's the same just boat we everybody's are in, in the same boat, right? This was based on 2017, 18 months. 16. 16. Yeah, exactly. 16 yeah. months. I remember you were working on yeah. it before right. I even came here. Right. So, but everybody's in the same. It's right. pre-COVID. And then COVID's come along. And then the, those those That's awards right. are not half. They're not yeah. half anywhere near half. Yeah. Um, one maybe bright spot is that um, I just heard back from. Lieutenant Governor Polito's office that she is interested in coming out to visit the campus. And as we've mm -hmm. told you, we consider the library part of the campus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. nice. And um, so if we could act quickly to enlist these seven communities and she comes out here and we present her with a letter to bring back to her boss, um, mm -hmm. you know, that's a very good opportunity to, to, to try and get this message directly to them. And, you know, I would think that uh, outgoing Governor might, might they got to be lose. generous. <laughs> I mean, we've all right, suffered under COVID, him as well as us and and his administration. And it would be an opportunity to correct, um, you know, a negative result of something that was unforeseen. Mm. So um, there's nothing nothing to be lost by asking for more for sure. money <laughs> at this yep. point. I think we right. all agree. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. yep. Okay. Yeah. So, 
Well, well, thank you. Thank you for all the well, thank you for the input into this. We wanted to make sure that yeah, no, uh, you were the first people very, to very know much appreciate that. that. <laughs> good, good to know. And we'll, you know, we'll, one of the we'll issues, or one of the things that we're talking about, is net zero buildings as well. So, the net, unfortunately, net zero construction is going to be even more expensive. And so, the architect confirmed that when we discussed that. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. but honestly, it doesn't make sense to put oil burners in here. I mean, this is you know. We don't want to do an oil burner kind of thing. So, well, Candace, didn't you say that the lead requirement is that you you use no electricity, yeah. right? Yes. So, right. You're talking but about heat source. That uh, was an, air an source essential heat component source. of the application. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. And Perfect. we will get an additional reimbursement at the end of the project because we're um, one of the lead certified libraries yeah. on the on the list. Oh, good. So that's yeah. probably I can't remember off the top of my head, but maybe it's a little under a million. Um, right. But it's something that right. it was, I think, about 750,000. Yeah. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. And um, so we'll get reimbursed that in the end for right. lead certified, wh whatever that turns out to be. But, um, right. Um, you know, we'll get those details as as the weeks sure. unfold. Yeah. Well, that's good. Well, news. I am I'm reaching out to um, geothermal engineers, including the one uh, Trevor had recommended or run into, um, and we're trying to get them. So we can peel, hopefully we can peel off some costs. Um, the complete streets, I mean, a complete neighborhoods grant that we received, um, you know, could do centralized parking. So you can peel that part off. We're trying very hard to make it more affordable. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if can we coordinate the timelines? I don't know, but we're gonna try. And I, I just want to share with the select board that uh, the CCI um, town campus subcommittee is working with the library to explore these questions because oh, right. the architect right. can tell us more readily than than sure. with a right. degree of certainty exactly. we need that somebody else can pay for the parking as long as the correct number of parking spaces are associated with the library project. Exactly. These are questions that would be go a long way to help us mitigate some of this sticker shock. Yeah. And MBLC will be there as well. Great. Right. Right. Yeah. That's great. And they could they can say yes or no. Mm -hmm. um, you've got to build your own parking. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe we'll, we'll be optimistic. Yes. <laughs> Good to be optimistic. Right. But maybe that's something the governor can support. Right. Right. Um, Flexibility. You know, can he can make an de executive decision to make sure that you know we could peel that off, even if they say no. You know, that's one of the things. Just because someone tells you no doesn't mean it's no no until <laughs> the end. And I mean, we got to figure this out. How are we going to do this? So, but anyway, or uh, Jane is talking to Orange's commission library commissioners tonight, and hopefully they'll be on board, and maybe we can move ahead with a few towns. But yeah. if we can get the majority of the towns, and maybe even all seven. Yeah, then huge help. that's huge because that's you know you're appealing to the governor and it's a legacy thing and that that should have some um impact on him and and if it's across the state um it means more representatives and senators on in support of you know the activity and there's a chunk that's western mass which is very appealing mm -hmm. yeah. yep. right. well you know i i have to say that it's nice to have a more current number mm -hmm. and it's as, as shocking as it might be it could have been a lot worse <laughs> it was very important that we did that you know yeah. i mean yeah. it just really helps yep. us you know as we continue the planning for right. sure well it's in the ballpark because you know if, yep. if you when i talked to westboro they had had used their architects at a factor of 0.45 and, and that was 11.6 million when we had met last month right so, but he said they just to call every month and he'll give them an updated percentage. So yeah. this is probably closer to the updated percentage now. At least inflation's halted last month. So we'll see where right. it goes. <laughs> Look at okay. leveled off at about 8% there. Some, some good More thing. More that so. optimism. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Keep it rolling. Make something happen here. Well, we appreciate you making room for us. Of course. On your yeah, busy welcome. agenda because nope. we felt yes. it was really important. No, I'm very, very grateful you came so. over to see us. So <laughs> have right. a great night. Thank you so great. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Talk to you soon.
Okay, so do you want to jump into the wastewater treatment upgrade project change order? I, that's exactly what I'd, I'd love to jump into the wastewater. <laughs> <laughs> you get a wetsuit. Not real. Get a wetsuit. <laughs> so this is, um, so this change order is for, let me explain it all. Um, we had, there's a memo in your packet uh, that explains it really, but we were hoping to do, remember we were hoping to do a change order for the whole thing. We cannot do that. We can do up to 25%. So the, the plan was to kind of pare back that, uh, do a change order, use up our a lot of our contingency, leaving some left over because you're gonna need that. Um, but to start working on the aeration tanks first and then, uh, then go out to bid for what we have to go out to bid for. So we found we didn't have to go out to bid for the whole thing. We can still take advantage of um, waterline already being mobilized on the plant um, and, and move that forward. So you'll see in the memorandum, you've got you know the first project and um, was the 16 million and we have the uh, roughly $6 million left. Uh, phase two is kind of um, talking about um, really what the original contract bid was, the change orders to date, which is only like $40,000, just under $40,000. The contingency remaining, which is just about, just under um, 1.3 million. Uh, the engineering was always in there, uh, just under 1.7. Um, and then miscellaneous costs were, were, um, were, you know, legal, bond counsel, all of that. So that's the 16 million. Then you flip the page and we have phase one, um, the change order number 22, which would be to modification to the south aeration basin, which would be dividing the walls, channel and pump modifications and slide gates. And the idea is to change that big box into smaller boxes, uh, just makes it more efficient um, and new apparatus on the top of it. Um, so then, and then phase two of that, or, or a, another subsection of that project would be raising the existing secondary clarifier walls, which we talked about, and then, um, and some mechanical equipment, new floating aerators for the south aeration tanks, um, process analyzers and SCADA modifications for the process control of the south aeration basin. So all the electrical and stuff that goes along with that, um, the you know, related electrical work for the south aeration basin. So table three really shows that work. It shows, um, you know, our original work, um, original change orders to date. This would be uh, change order 22, which is $3,928,824. We would have um, a contingency remaining of um, $392,882. Um, so the remaining contingency would be, we'd be using 300. So the remaining contingency would be 370,000 um, engineering agreement we've already paid for, a secondary engineering we've already paid for, for the phase two project. Um, and then we would have an additional, uh, because this project would take about 18 months, we have additional observation, um, which we've been paying for right along, which is you know them to verify everything's going right, our meetings, all of that work. Um, and then again, the bond council stays the same. So that brings our project to about twenty million four hundred eighteen thousand nine fifty six. We would have a remaining um, balance of one million five hundred eighty one thousand to to um, finish work on the second aeration tank, um, which we would go out to bid for. Uh, so the funding sources are really at the USDA. Um, which is our contingency funds and the additional funds that we appropriated the $3 million that we appropriated for the project. So the phase one would be uh, this change order would be around 18.7% of the project, which is under the 20% or 25% guideline that um, we got confirmation from the attorney general's office on. Um, so. I guess the only thing, I mean, I have no problem with this, Trevor. Mm -hmm. yep. It's just that, um, you know, I want to make sure, I think part of the motion should be that the bid go out as soon as possible because the whole savings or the whole idea here was that um, we didn't want, I mean, Waterline is an excellent contractor mm -hmm. and we didn't want to- You mean the bid demote. for the 1.5 right. additional work? 
Exactly, and I talked to them about that. Because I don't want that. them demobilized. No, and, that, and the idea was this is going to take about 18 months. The thought was to kind of hang out for a little bit on this because the issue is that you go out to bid now, you're going to possibly have two contractors working the same pit at the same uh -huh. time. Okay. So they said if you wait a little bit, um, they can kind of clean up their spot. So in case somebody does come in with a lower bid for the project, which could happen, um, it might be rare, but it could happen um, because they're already mobilized. They'll probably be pretty favorable. And I know they'll want to build, bid the work. However, you know, to be fair, you bid it out to everybody. Um, if they do, if, if we wait a few months to go out to bid, um, if another bidder comes in, DA Sullivan or somebody comes in to bid this project and wins it, they'll be at a, at a point where they can just and move away and they're not both working on the same plumbing, electrical, blah, blah, blah. There's a cleaner separation. How, how, about, how about that we go out to bid? Yep. And that and, and part request of the, it be done at a certain. I asked. I mentioned this to Casey as well. I think that's a, a conversation we should have with with our engineers. Can we? Yes, for sure. I, and I had that conversation I, at the I last think, meeting, but you all should have it too, and and see how you I, feel about I it. I feel I, that's what I would like to do because mm -hmm. I don't want to delay on the. I mean, I do feel that water line will be. Um, yeah, a, the, a good will have chances to win this because. Mm -hmm. They won't have the cost of demobilization. Right. I don't want them to have to leave, leave, and then come back because right. that defeats the whole purpose. I of, agree. Of what our whole intention of doing this. If you talk to Justin and um, or, or not really water line because you can't, but talk to Justin and Dave about that. Both of both of yeah. you have that conversation, and whatever you guys decide, I'm good with. I just what they had told us at that last meeting is if you can wait a little bit. I think you can put it in the bid specs that okay. if someone decides, I mean, we don't want to say waterline, but if there that that the we would we would not execute the contract until you know waterline is finished until the current, certain, yeah, current until they get to done. a certain point. Mm -hmm. But we could still go out to bid right now because I, I you know, the longer we wait, Trevor, it's well, just the bad. issue is. It, it, that's true if you and what they said to us well, I said oh, we, we want to get pricing right away and they said well really all this work is cement and rebar there's no um, very little mechanical to it so you're not like like this phase had the the clear you know all the pumps I the RAS know. pump the headworks still, building there is still, no material I don't want to wait I want to have that break. conversation then uh, Trust Julie me. has her hand up hey Julie thank you Hi, there was also the comment I heard that um, there's still a good amount of contingency left in the current contract. And if we're later in the current contract, we can use some of that contingency for the other work. Bingo, yes. Thank you, Julie. You were at the meeting as well um, at the working group. That was one of the other things. Like if we, the, the issue is we only get the grant money if all the money is spent, including the contingency, and we'll be more favorably to use that contingency money a little bit if we go to bid a little bit later than if we go to bid right now and the whole idea is we don't want to give yeah, up but what any if we, of that grant right we don't want to give any of the grant up but what if we make it the, the you can write the specs any way you want so we could put write it in the specs Just, yeah check that, with them I, I i leave it up to you guys yeah, to have that okay. discussion and i'm fine either way i just this I, was I just, their recommendation okay. to us. So. I just feel it's really important to move ahead. Mm -hmm. No, and, I agree. And lock, to finish the work, lock but... in water line mm -hmm. so that we don't have the co potential cost of mobilization. I mean, that was our whole argument. Agreed. Going forward Agreed. To yeah. our, you know, to <clears> people. <throat> so yeah, I, I don't just check in with them. Yeah, I okay. mean, to me, you can write you can write any contract the way you want it. Mm -hmm. So. I, to me, we could put it in so that we do take advantage of the contingency. We do take advantage of whatever. We can make it so that they can be at a certain completion um, before the <clears throat> contract is executed or something like that. What, you, I was just gonna, just gonna ask a question. Yeah, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, we're probably gonna talk at least with Justin Skelly tomorrow or oh, Friday, good. but- um, Well, then could you convey that? Yeah, mm -hmm. please. Oh yeah, can yeah. you tell him that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Casey will make sure that a message gets through, but um, what dictates 
if and when contingency money gets spent. I just need to understand that. Yeah, it, I, from my understanding, it really, you hang on to contingency in case something goes wrong. And we're about 63% of the way through the project and we've purchased pretty much everything that we're gonna need. So the contingency, and we've only gone over by 40,000 and we've got like 1.2 million. That's why Waterline, I wanna lock them in. I, I get that, yeah. So they, um, so that contingency, when we get a little further in the project, we can find things to finish up on the project, do a little bit more. And I think that's, or, or roll that into the, to the second bid. So you're using, because the one thing, that, the reason why we have contingency and still are hanging on to like 370 or so is because the electrical right now isn't in yet. It's been ordered, it was supposed to be here in August. And then they said, I mean, I think before yeah. that, and then they said November, They've had other things that's been bumped out a bit. So they're worried about the, the biggest risk in all this is the electrical stuff that comes last. So they want it, they said, just hang on to that a little bit. And then, but once that's done, there really isn't much left. Um, and, and then we can find ways to make sure we use it up so we get all that grant money back. Um, also, I just wanna keep in mind that, you know, we had a wish list of stuff that we wanted to do, including to allow septic you know, dumping for septic owners because, you know, town-wide people are paying mm -hmm. for this renovation. So um, if we could put that in the specs as a separate, you know, just a separate bid, mm -hmm. if we, because Waterline is so good, even though everything is escalating in expenses, we still might be able to squeeze in that mm -hmm. um, request for the sep to dump, um, you know, whatever's pumped out of people's septic. But, we, you know, we're gonna have to figure out how to charge for it and all that kind of stuff. I know that, but if if we can still squeeze it in, that seems to be more fair to everybody town-wide. And Trevor, um, just just um, mm -hmm. explain, um, this, this is a secondary aeration? Uh, so we have two aeration yep. tanks right now, and the phase two of the project was to work on those aeration tanks. Mm -hmm. And so this is really taking part of that phase two and bringing into the phase one for the change order. So yeah, we have two boxes right now. Okay. The idea is to, to um, instead of having one big aeration tank, the, the one that we're going to work on the south one hasn't been used in many years. We right. really just use that one right now, kind of closest to the road. Um, so the idea is to kind of, while that's not in use, rehab it into the new system. And then once that's done, go out to bid for that for our current one, because then we'll be able to bring this one online. Right. And then we can work on that other one. Yeah. It's all about redundancy. So if for some reason we couldn't get to that last aeration tank, we're still pretty good because we're, we've broken that up into multiple. So it's not like you had to do this other one. We think it's smart because it's, it's right. like we have with a with the clarifier, you're always having redundancy so you can switch off and on in case something fails or you've got to redo something. But um, it wouldn't be like catastrophic if we couldn't do that other one. We just think it's a smart thing to do. We you know plan for it and everything, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, makes sense. But yeah. Um, okay, so we'll, you know, we'll, what money do we need to spend in order to make sure we get our, our grant? We need to spend the 20, is it, uh, is it? Well, yes, and we had a conversation with USDA about this and we're still kind of confirming that with them that, um, so one of the issues where we were worried if we spent this extra money that we've appropriated, they're gonna say, oh, that's more money for the pot. You don't really need the grant, but we do. And they realize we do. And we've had the conversations with their engineer and the lead people there um, so that, it won't it won't count against us that we're doing this additional work as phase two um, as kind of a phase one change order. They're not going to limit us. They're still going to give us the grant. So we just need to spend everything up to that 16 million, which was yep. what we had pretty much already spent. So um, I don't see why we wouldn't get every bit of that as long as we spend the contingency. Right. Can't have any money left over. We're going to have to get. And if you don't spend the contention, is the grant just reduced by the amount yes, of the yes. correct. Okay, correct. so we're not like we're going to lose all our money if we no, no. spend five fifty thousand dollars. Correct. Yep, it'll be fifty thousand. We don't get. Yeah. Right. And if we can get Scott's source here, we can verify that 
mm -hmm. you know, he, he understands what's happening with the project. We've so, laid so much money out as a town and there should be a lot more help from the government on this stuff. They've been wonderful, great to work with. It's not them. They're also standing there going, where's the money, yeah. federal government? We've it's been sitting rules. here. Yeah, yeah. It's, and it's the it's, federal it's, government funneling to USDA. Because they USDA only gets about six million bucks a year to give out. And there's you know, for the whole state. And um, it's no different than MVP program. Right. They're still getting $20 million. Yeah. Right now, and, the state and, can't fit money in their drawers. It's so full. I, I mean, know. it's just and there unbelievable. Were promise, and and the, the, I mean, the understanding from Joe and Natalie was that, that it was going to be a hundred million funneled to them. Yeah. And they still only got 20 million. Where's the money? I know. That's stupid. All right. So, criminal. Did we need to, did we make a motion? We no, not motion? yet. I think it would, we would want to entertain a motion to approve the change order um, in the amount of $3,928,823.50. I, I would make that motion um, for that amount. Um, um, and, and just- And approve the chair to sign or, or approve the Casey to sign, right? Are you? I can and, sign. Yeah, approve. In parentheses, Please go out to bid as soon as possible. Understood. I, yep. I really. I, mean, I, I understand where you're coming yeah, from, and I I'm, felt I'm just that so way nervous. too. I just, I'm, yep. And I'll second that motion without regard to the parenthetical. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, any further discussion, any comments? <laughs> All those in favor? Tim Hilchy, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank, thank you. I, I just. And we'll you take know. it up with just uh, with yeah, please. Justin tomorrow. Talk, talk to yeah. Friday. Yep, please. exactly. Yep. I, I, I know there's a way you can do it with specs. Mm -hmm. So if we could put it in there, that I think then we could work, you know, lock in water line without now, having we have them to do a second have motion? the chance of de I'm I'm just worried yeah. that they would demobilize. Sign. No, no, I think that was I think it was, was, that was the motion with, for Casey to sign. Oh Maybe no! I'll make, I'll make amend my, we may probably have to revote it. Okay. I will amend the motion to have the chair sign. Do you have a second? I'll second that. The chair or <laughs> can you fix that? Because again? I don't have so the final. This is a draft form right now. Right. When we get the final one, we'll have Casey sign it. It'll, oh, okay. it'll come to me uh, faster than the okay. Yeah. I will draw my motion. Thank you. I'm, I mean, my amendment. My <laughs> amendment would be to have Casey sign it. Thank you. And I'd second that. All those in favor? Tim Hilchy, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Massa, aye. Thank you for doing Gosh, that. Gosh, the drama of this. No, it's okay. <laughs> we get, we get it straight. No, no, no. We want to make sure we're all good I know, in case I know. Can take I, it away. But I appreciate you knowing that I it, it, I am 100% supportive of this. Yes, it. for sure. It's just that our whole intention was to make sure that we locked them in. Yeah. The cost of mobilizing and demobilizing was. was yeah, it was, it's beneficial to us for right. sure to get it, it moving. It's it's a way for us to save money. Yep. And so I want to just make sure we are truly saving money. It's also money. a way for us to not go through the risk of having a lower bidder come in and do the same thing that happened at Kelleher Drive. Oh, gosh. Yes. Oh, yes. Thank absolutely. You. Thank you. I, um, I, I mean, that is so, I mean, yep. if you have a good contractor, you got to keep them. So uh, the next item is the September primary election warrant. So I've, I've been asked to read this, right? Yes. Okay. So um, motion. I move to approve the 2022 state primary Commonwealth of Massachusetts election warrant as follows. Franklin, comma, SS, still don't know what SS stands for, <laughs> to the constables of the city town of Deerfield. Greetings. In the name of the Commonwealth, you are hereby required to notify and warn the inhabitants of said city or town who are qualified to vote in primaries to vote at Deerfield Town Offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, on Tuesday, the sixth day of September 2022, from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. for the following purposes, to cast their votes in state primaries for the candidates of political parties for the following offices, governor for this commonwealth, lieutenant governor for this commonwealth, attorney general for this commonwealth, Secretary of State for this Commonwealth, Treasurer for this Commonwealth, Auditor for this Commonwealth, Representatives in Congress, Second Congressional District, Counselor, Eighth Counselor District, Senator in General Court, Hamden, Franklin, oh, excuse me, Hampshire, Franklin, Worcester District, 
Representative and General Court, First Franklin District, District Attorney, Northwestern District, and Sheriff for Franklin County. Here are fail, not, and make return of this warrant with your doings thereon at the time and place of said voting given under our hands this 10th day of August, 2022. Do we have a second for that motion? Um, I second that, but you know, there is no Franklin County. Yeah. I, I, I don't know why they. Well, what's the sheriff of? Yeah, Sheriff of yeah, Franklin, Franklin County. Franklin County Sheriff. Yeah. That still exists. It does still exist. Yeah, but it's yeah, not. Yeah, but under... there's no county. I know. The county was abolished. I know. I had a good conversation with, um, what's his name at Burkhog? I keep trying to blank. Um, I mean, that's fine. <laughs> but the, He's the, he was the first guy for the, for the oh, county. Oh, Jay? Jay. Jay. Uh, Di so we had a good conversation with him about how the county kind of went away and how that whole, all those things and how it got started and pretty fascinating. But anyways, yeah. So that was, yeah, I mean, there is still a Franklin way, County, but there isn't a County as far as being funded by the state, by our, by our town taxes. I know. So, but anyways, it's just that there's no legal entity anymore. Like a county. So can I still have a second? Is, is the sheriff? She gave you a second. I gave <laughs> oh, you a good. second. She gave you a second. Is, I said I seconded it. It's you did. That You're I, right. Sorry. I just said, Why does it you know, the ballot, <laughs> just, the ballot is incorrect. Uh, are you just questioning the sheriff? Because that's the only one that says right. Franklin Well, County. it says Franklin County. Right. And then up here, it says Franklin, but. SS. So I, wonder I wonder what, what SS, SS means. means but I've I'll seen ask that before. Carlene tomorrow what the SS means. Yeah. It's OK. It's just, state. you know. Well, I'm just asking you. It's annoying. What is the sheriff actually referred to? Franklin County West. Sheriff. Right. Yeah. So yeah, but, we're electing him to this but I, designation. But I, I understand I, what you're saying, Carolyn. Because it's there is an still interesting a little Franklin Franklin collection County. of towns still exists. It's yeah. just a formal if you look on a map, it county is a government. County. But it's but the state runs that. They took over the right. the jail, the courts, court of Franklin County, right? Yeah. So, so I think it's a state. Maybe the that's state the SS still is the state as something. this group of twenty six towns does reference it. Yeah, but there but isn't an actual government. They dissolved no, it. Yeah. They dissolved it, I so know. it's bogus that they keep referring to it as a county. That's what but I do behind my desk. Okay. I talk to myself about this what thing because I still don't here? understand why we did this. <laughs> no, it's okay. All I'm right. just saying it's that mascot they're making us uh, called yeah. it Franklin County Sheriff's Office. Yeah, it's weird. It's still there. I'm. I'm not. I'm. I'm. Only I, problem is. All right. I'm, I'm just calling the vote. I'm just <laughs> criticizing the, the fact that you have to read this because we were not not properly right notifying the ballot. And it's like, well, you know, how about this? Well, yeah. we still put improper. Franklin County in the warrant too. We I do. Know. We yeah, still okay. put it in the warrant. I. Um, I'm. I'm, I'm not. I'm not gonna. Read it all those in favor. Tim Hilchy, aye. <laughs> Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Long night. We don't need to do this. <laughs> I'm just she, saying. So, oh, we need to sign protest. this here. Let me. We've now, got we two have to, to make sign another here. motion, or, or no? We don't have to no. Um, no. What you do is no, you sign it. The dates, I will okay. sign. There's two documents to sign. One for the official book and one for the poster. Mm -hmm. Perfectly okay. I'm just. I feel that's that's the that. underlying question. <laughs> Why, Why did we dissolve the county government? We shouldn't have. But. Yeah. Sorry, I shouldn't point. Yes, you're right. <laughs> and then we have um, we have a vote to open the special town meeting warrant. That's up to you. I wrote it. If I you think it makes sense it. to open it right now. So if we want to add anything, we'll close um, it. I'll make a motion to open the ballot. That was moved to declare the warrant for special town meeting open, currently scheduled for October 24th, 2022 at 7 p.m. in Frontier Regional School Auditorium with intent to close said warrant on September 30th, 2022. And that's no, just a projected second. date. Right, of course, we can Sorry. adjust that date. Yep, that's fine. We have a second? I yeah. second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilgey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. There is um, Okay. 
Um, and then we have a ZBA request for comments. This is 951 River Road. Uh, Doug Ryan is looking to do uh, to do an, um, an amendment to his special permit. He does automotive repair and auto body. Um, there has been some discussion about the town should have given him up some, the, the road right now, if you look at the road kind of goes behind his building. And then that, that also never really got kind of given to whoever right. owns it. So he's got this like little thing in the island. I'm not really sure how that's all so working, but I think he's just looking to me with a request about how we pursue that. I guess this must have come up when Bernie was still here because I remember Bernie talking about it. Um, I just don't know what action we should or shouldn't have taken. So it's this is a research project, but I think that particular section of the road was part of the county mm -hmm. way. And so the, I think it was discontinued, Yeah, that it, section. It was just, it, it is a county road. So we don't have the ability to declare it surplus and sell it uh. to him. Maybe that's what it was. And now that there's it no is. county, there's, there's nobody no else county, to, to. Well, nobody. that happened. He, we had no county when he came in the first time. <laughs> yeah, but there's no, there's no one to, 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 uh, to that has the authority to declare it surplus. surplus, and there's no body to vote it surplus. Huh. So maybe I should talk to Linda. Yeah, she might know. She might know who. Yep. Okay, I'll talk to Linda. Some of that stuff just reverts to the. Butters too. But yeah. This is, I guess, this is an amendment to the special existing special permit recreational and automotive um, repair, auto body repair, in, uh, includes 17 unregistered vehicles. So it's to allow them to do 17 unregistered vehicles there. Um, do, do we have any comments on this or? I really don't know the, do we have to, when is their meeting? So their meeting, I think their meeting is the 25th. Um, Casey, I, I would. Do we have um, a meeting before that? We then? have a meeting before that. You do, but they want it back two days prior so they can publish the comments. Um, oh. Then I, I yeah. if, if I have some comments, um, I would like to just forward them to you. Okay. And you can put them in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because we can send them can comments we do that? Is that all right, Trevor? Yeah, that's fine with me. Um, I don't really, I, I would want to ask somebody something first before I, right. I, I mean, I just heard about to tonight. So. Seven, 17 vehicles sounds it seems a, bit, a lot. It seems like a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, yeah. Okay. Well, he currently has a certain amount. He does. Right. Yeah. He and does. so maybe it could it's be going from 10 to 17. Correct. Correct. And so I, I just want to think about it a little bit more. Okay. So we'll come back to that. Um, there's another request for comment. Um, so that came up. So this other one came up. The reason I put it in your mail is because it, again, has a similar deadline of the 23rd oh, and your meeting is the 24th. This is the veterinarian emergency yeah, hospital, right? So that's right? the They're expansion of the parking expansion lot. The parking lot. Yeah. I'm, okay. As long I don't as have any issues there, there were, I don't have we're any so issues. far off the road. Right. And, yeah. And um, where is this? In the as long as there were in the mail. Oh, it no, was no. in the mail. I don't know. I just saw this one over here. I didn't see the other one. So. No, we had two. We had two like direct copies I, for you guys. I, oh, okay. um, but it's you not have in the packet. Yeah, My only concern was, you know, the wetland delineation, but I'm sure yeah. they're working through the conservation commission on that. Yeah. So, um, I didn't know if there was a current delineation. Do you know, Casey? Um, I don't. I just wanted I to make do sure think they had to go. To I just wanted to make sure that the, the um, that there was a current um, delineation because it's been a few years. So um, if there's a current wetlands um, delineation, I have no issues going. I just wanted to make verify that there was. That's all. Okay. I don't know. I would have to ask. That's a question. That's not even our purview. But right. I just want to. That would be my only question on that. Otherwise, I'm totally in favor of it. Yep. So if I'm hearing you correctly, what you're saying is that our comment would be to the zoning board is to make sure that the Conservation Commission has a current delineation of the wetlands because they've been expanding in that area. Yes. Well, it's been a few years, so yeah. just want to make sure that yeah. the Conservation Commission was actually in the loop on this. 
And that's a legitimate comment for us to make. It's just oh, absolutely. verify with another board that the current uh, delineation is accurate. And I didn't ask that question when I talked to Alex Hirschenretter. Um, yeah. He physically handed that to Pat and I didn't ask that question. Okay. Because Amy Hahn, the new, the new admin down the hall is starting to pick this stuff up. Oops, sorry. I, I, I don't know offhand that, but if it is and they're in the loop, then I'm fine. So be sure the Conservation Commission has a current delineation of wetlands. Yeah, because it's been a few years. I want to say they have to do something with CONCOM, but don't quote me. Then, I think a delineation um, is only good for three years. Right. So um, unless they can extend, can they extend the delineation? Thing? My, no, well, you can extend upon request, but um, <clears throat> my understanding is that at some point when Vesh was considering expanding they had the property delineated and this was while I was on the Conservation Commission most recently so I would think it's been within the last three years but mm -hmm. um, as to whether um, that delineation was ever approved by the Conservation Commission that's the point we want to clarify. clarify I just want to make okay. sure yeah okay all right and then we'll let you so I will give that to Amy that. to put into the record for zoning that right. one and then yep. whatever comments you have carolyn just shoot them yep. over and i'll send i i, I just want to look at the river road <clears throat> situation a little bit okay more. um it's right at the you know it's at, right at the beginning of our you know river road there so. yeah we have a placeholder so um, we have a placeholder for a policy i've been working on this thing called either i've called it remote working or telecommuting and i've been working with Council on it, and she okay. wasn't able to return the document for right. me to give it to you. I, That's um, fine. I just want to thank Casey for doing that because um, we don't know what's going to happen this winter. So yep. having some sort of plan, plan <laughs> pre-planned kind of stuff is makes total sense. So we want to be able to keep our operations going, right? And we have to be flexible. So I'll try to have Jennifer throw this on the agenda, or one of us throw this on the agenda as a placeholder for the next meeting as well. That's fine. The other um, a placeholder is to- um, Well, we have an appointment. We need you guys need to appoint Carlene Hamlin, our interim town clerk, as the burial agent. Yeah, so um, Kevin won't have to be dealing with that. She'll have- that. I'll, I'll uh, nominate um, Carlene Hamlin as our burial agent. And then um, have the select board- Or the board of health sign. You guys, you're the same thing. I'll make a, well, can I make the motion? Can I oh, ask yeah. a question before you say? Yeah, please. Um, since she's an interim, does she also need to be interim? You know, I don't think so. Okay, that's um, fine. That's they presented because she and Jen Asian worked only on goes, this. Only goes to year to year anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we appoint each year. Yeah. Right. Fine. I just wanted to. Okay. Yeah. By the time we have a new town clerk, it will be, I mean, a new um, person. It will be next year. Yeah, I yeah. put an email out. I, I know. I know. Answer. <laughs> it's so just... I would make the motion to appoint Carlene uh, C. Hamlin to be the uh, designated barrel agent, um, and I would um, have the board of health chair sign. Oh, okay. and I'll second that motion. Okay, so friendly amendment. Okay. All those in, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Uh, Carolyn Ness, aye. Just figured board of health staff. Yeah, sense, no, right? that's fine. That's fine. Um, I didn't even remember that it was Board of Health. I thought it was everything was select board. It might be, yeah. But it doesn't matter. Either We're way. We're the same people. Exactly. Yeah, they just figured. Um, okay, so do you want to just do the... Um, Unanticipated stuff before the town. Yeah, you want to do that? Okay. Yeah, can we? So yeah, we have, you, you guys tell me whether you want me to do it or not. And so I'll we go run through it with you. We have the um, approval of deeds and signatory authorization of sale of documents for sale of land to New Pro LLC, which is affectionately known as the Oxford property. Yes. Yeah, so I'll read these motions, some of them, and I think Tim's going to read the other. Um, so there's three motions. It relates to the conveyance of land. You've got the motion to actually convey the land. Then you have confirmation of the land, the parcel identifiers and information. And then you, you, the third motion is to just say, okay, we do this mm -hmm. as of today. So move to convey the property shown as parcel 2-1 and parcel 2-2 
on a plan entitled Plan of Land in Deerfield, Massachusetts, prepared for the town of Deerfield, scale one inch equals 50 inch. Doesn't make sense. 50 feet, right? One inch equals 50 feet. Um, prepared by uh, Heritage Surveys Inc. dated August 21st, 2021, and endorsed by the Deerfield Planning Board on September 10th, 2020, and recorded with the Franklin County Registry of Deeds in Plan Book 148, page 007. Um, and this select board meeting date is August 10th, 2022. So um, we'll have a roll call vote. Trevor McDaniel, I. Uh, Carolyn, I. I. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll second it. Oh, second, you. thank oh. you. <laughs> yep, so moving along. So we have it seconded by Tim. So I, Trevor McDaniel, in favor. I, Carolyn Ness. And I, Tim Hilch. Okay, so that's good. That's recorded. Um, next motion I uh, move that pursuant to votes on articles five and six of the Deerfield uh, of the December 8th. 2014 special town meeting of the select board approves the conveyance and transfer of land containing 7.971 acres of land, more or less, situate on the town of Deerfield, County of Franklin, <laughs> Commonwealth of Massachusetts, shown as parcel 2-1 on a plan entitled Plan of Deer <coughs> Plan of Land in Deerfield. Massachusetts prepared for the town of Deerfield scale one inch equals 50 feet uh, prepared by Heritage Surveys Inc dated August 21st, 2020 and endorsed by the Deerfield Planning Board on September 10th, 2020 and recorded with the Franklin County Register of Deeds in plan book 180, 148, page 007, uh, parentheses, the plan in consideration of $450,000 to New Pro LLC and also approves the conveyance and transfer of land containing 0.924 acres of land, more or less situate in the town of Deerfield, County of Franklin, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, shown as parcel 2-2, not a building lot, on the plan in consideration of 62,500 to said new pro LLC. You have a second? So we'll second that. Hmm. I'll go, go ahead, Tim. Second. No, that's second. I'll all those in, no. all yeah. those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. Move that the select board authorizes Trevor D. McDaniel, select board chair, to enter into and execute on its behalf any and all documents necessary to effectuate the transfer of the land described above. I will second that. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. And then let's see. So there is a signature by all three of us here. Yep. Yep. And then all three of you sign that. Yep. And so the scheduled date for the closing is Friday. Yep. Um, Trevor and I are going to walk through the documents either today or tomorrow, probably, or I'm sorry, either Thursday or Friday. Um, council's still waiting for the buyer's lawyer to get us some documents. Okay. That's that. That's the last item we have for signature. Uh, we. Uh, do you want to go back to the mail, Trevor? I do want to go back to. Uh, let's see. We've got all that done. I did want to go back to the. To the. Um, do we want to talk about the? Yeah, and the mail is the. So the mail has the mail has a lot of things. The yes. mail has the old Deerfield wastewater treatment facility alternatives. Yep. It has the advisory from council on the new cannabis legislation. Yep. It has a draft post community agreement um, that's been requested for the new laboratory or the proposed laboratory facility at the St. Louis campus. Okay. Um, and the reason you're getting the advisory from council and the HCA is so that you have a frame of reference later 
I don't honestly know if the legislation has been signed by the governor. I was trying to watch State House News today to see if it was on there. I haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. But I've been away from my email for a couple of hours. So. Or if he's vetoed any part of it. Or if he's, yeah. Um, so we don't know. The intent of the legislation is to, the biggest thing for, for most small towns is to roll back or make retroactively um, make decisions on the state level about the local HCAs. So what that means is they could effectively make all of our HCAs uh, defunct by this legislation. Um, it also gives cannabis control authority to review all HCAs that are forward moving. So those, those are two key things. And a couple of my colleagues and I have been following this because we know it's going to have significant impacts on smaller towns who, in good faith, spent lots of money on legal bills. Deerfield's um, one of them. Negotiated in good faith to provide access for these companies to, you know, have these retail cultivator and manufacturing spaces. And then the, the legislature essentially... Um, made some changes that, and didn't necessarily take into account a lot of the small towns comments on it. So yeah, so let me read this for you all. This is just <clears throat> the great work <clears throat> of our representatives. The act also amends and codifies the restrictions that municipalities that may no longer charge a community impact fee after the eighth year of operation of a marijuana establishment or medical marijuana treatment center. The act also substantially changes the way the impact fee is calculated. Such fee can no longer be based on a raw license, uh, on a raw percentage of gross sales. Rather pursuant to the act, impact fees must be documented, transmitted to the licensee not later than one month after the date of the annual renewal of the final license. Documented costs must be reasonably related to the cost imposed upon the municipality by the oper operation of the marijuana establishment or medical marijuana treatment center in the, in the preceding year, the total of which shall not exceed 3% of gross sales. So you can't just say an automatic 3%, they have to label what those impacts are right. and they can't go over 3%. Meanwhile, the state takes 12.45% for doing absolutely nothing. Right, it's bullshit. It is, excuse me, you can say it. No, it's no. absolutely- I'm sorry. It's, I don't should, apologize. But I'm, I'm, it's I'm again, really pissed because- Taking advantage of small towns and our meager budgets for our legal- And meager staff. And meager staff, meager well, budgets. Here, We've so been we trying for time. years. Are we years. working on years this? Working. Years I working know. on this just to I, try I, and get I, one entity in and then Meanwhile, while the state state's raking in money so much they can't fit it in their coffers, they then tell us, oh, by the way, no, you can't have any. It's just. I, I mean, this is. It's I knew you were upset about it. I didn't mean to. I can't even tell, tell you, you how you angry I am I know, with them about it. I know. I, I, it's very frustrating. We have been Written trying, by the have... marijuana industry. We because have... guess who's got all the money to pay campaign donations? With that whole system is what's wrong with this country and why it's rotting and fighting with each other because money in politics destroys a democracy and it's frustrating to watch day after day after day on the federal level on the state level it's all about money meanwhile little towns with donated time and you know small amount of staff can't afford to keep the lights on but State keeps raking in that money. Politicians keep raking in that co campaign donation. I could go on and on, but I'll stop there. I'm sorry. I should not. No, it's just, it's for years we've been working on this. And then they just slide this in. Hey, guess what, everybody? So I did. So two of my colleagues and I sent letters to the governor. And I appreciate staff. you really doing that because, I mean, there's just nothing we could say that. We tried. I, I know support. you guys. You need a, comp a campaign donation. What you need. That's how you get change in this state, this country. So the other thing you see is the HCA. And so this is 
This is a draft HCA for confidence analytics, which is the laboratory um, or the proposed laboratory. Um, they would like to start that negotiation process. So I had a conversation with Kate and Liz Lydon is, is, has been assigned to work on the, on cannabis issues with Kate. So we had a conversation and they revised a, an HCA. So it sort of identifies some of the changes that are potential changes in with the legislation. And my question to the board is, would you let me work with Kate and Liz and Confidence Analytics to go through the negotiation process? And then Kate and I can bring it back to you yes. with them. Uh, yes, I'm that's fine what we've that. done for the last couple. I just want to make sure that's I, still I, okay. Do you want to vote on that, or you just want consensus? Up to you guys. Do you need? Do you want to vote? I'm fine with it. Yeah, I'm fine with it. No. Yeah, just do it. Just you know what we're concerned about. Yep. And what we'll do, I'll ask Kate to come back and explain I mean, it, it. We've had the same issues. Yeah. And so, which is why we put. So one thing, recall and this. In the last one we did with Sunny Days, which is where this is supposed to be located, we did put in a requirement, a timeline to get this thing built. And so one thing that Ken Boquillion, who's the principal on that, he brought this to my attention that we need to get this done so that they can keep up with what their process is. Mm -hmm. So that's, we're trying to do that, but the cannabis stuff sort of got in the way. Try to nail them down. I think, um, and the only thing I really, you know, I, I didn't understand, I, we have an impact fee of lawyers fees for sure. I just wasn't sure how you, how you um, assess that. And would, I'd like to see, maybe Kate has other examples on a testing facility versus something that sells. They do have sales. So there is some level of figuring out how to um, get an impact fee. And it really our impact fee is, is all the cost to, to get this well, stuff up and running. It's lawyer fees, but don't forget staff fees. Exactly. I mean, yeah, here exactly. we are just telling Casey right now, just go ahead and do it. Okay, well, that That's, costs us. And it so you're doing that and so you're doing something, something else. else. Right. Absolutely. So, right. okay. Just make sure you try to figure out. So the, so do you want me to track my time for that? Because I think, I think Kate and I, We're gonna we usually do this concurrently. So I could probably give you a ballpark on what my time is based on what her it time is. It sounds like we're going to need it for all of this stuff. I don't yeah. know how you calculate it going back all those years. So much staff time, so many, so much money. How about how about release. volunteer time? Yeah. Well, the volunteer time you guys spent getting all of this up and running, being in Boston, you know, mm -hmm. advocating. Dick, Dick and I went to meetings in Boston. We were, I remember we were the, the first only meeting ones we all from went Western to. Mass. We went to every single meeting. Yep. The so, remember the meeting they had at Magic Wings years ago? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That yep. we all went to because we were all trying to learn about what it was going to look like. Is we out. invited people out because no one was coming from the right. whole area. Yep. And it just, you know, this is just so discouraging because we put, we knew this was happening and we made every effort to be cutting edge and to be prepared. We're the last ones to get it. And and just we, and just in time for have, them to take all the money right. away. And we don't even have $1 coming in. It's ridiculous. Yep. So, okay. Anyway. Okay. So, um, so I will shoot an email out to Kate and Liz and we'll get in touch with confidence right. analytics. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Uh, oh, let's see. Really it's town ministry's report. That's, I think that's all we have left. So we're gonna get out early I'll try today. to make it quick. Okay. Um, so the most, the things that are critical right now are end of year. Um, Brenda and I are going over end of year. She's trying to finish up free cash. Her intent is to mm -hmm. try to get free cash out for review the week of the 22nd. Um, but we still have to, we still have to make, figure out the encumbrances. So she and I are gonna meet and talk about that tomorrow. Um, she's gotten most of the accounts payable logged because that all has to get done. Then she has to do the reporting in Gateway. So she and I are gonna finish working up the things that the two of us do. And then she's gonna start. Would you, would you please tell her, I am so sorry. I had asked her to follow up on the tick report. She doesn't, didn't have any she, record of the We tick never report. saw it. She said something to me this afternoon. I didn't I, I didn't it. come into my, it was addressed to me, but it didn't come into my box. Oh, I didn't, that's weird. I, I never got it. Okay. I, so I assumed that it went to her Here. direct. Okay. Cause it said, you know, it was addressed to me 
but it was addressed to the town hall. And oh. I just assumed that when the bill came in, that it went, it just somebody picked it up and put it, yeah. because why would it go to me? And then me to hand it over to Brenda. Well, the funny just thing direct. was, so she, when she mentioned it to me, I knew yesterday before I left, she was working on the accounts payable stuff. Oh, she, she had just it gotten up. two outliers dumped on her desk that afternoon. I know, but the, it was just by chance. Paul Klinginger sent it yeah, to me. Yeah, I says, didn't. So maybe we should him. tell him that he could send it to Brenda. like Jen or me or Pat. Right, but I, I, I know it didn't come into my box because I didn't. I so he was up. following up because he didn't see a payment. Because he had sent it in May. Oh, okay. He sent yeah. it in May and nothing happened. I wish he had reached out to us. I would have had Pat track that down. Well, he um, sent me an email. So I okay. just forwarded it to Brenda and I said, you know, I said, I don't know what happened to this, why it wasn't paid because Brenda's usually on top Yeah, of usually that. we're on top of it. She's right. usually really good about that, but I don't right. think we saw it. So would you just tell her I'm really sorry? Absolutely, absolutely. I, did, I, don't, I don't ever remember seeing it in my box. No, she's kind of stressed out about closing this one year. I know. So... Just we're still waiting. Thing. So the other thing is, is we're still waiting for money to close two grants. So the streetlight conversion, mm -hmm. we had received an unexpected grant from Eversource or a commitment for a grant right. from Eversource to pay for a portion of the streetlight conversion. Well, the problem is, is they haven't finalized their payment. So if we don't get their payment for 83 some odd thousand dollars, we're going to get a hit to free cash. He will get the payment. Eventually. It just, it right. may hit free cash. So I just want to warn you. Um, what that is also impacting is our green communities close out right. because so green communities wanted us to go through with this with Eversource. Nobody, nobody thought it was going to take six or eight months because it's been six months. We should have known better. Um, <laughs> so wait, eight months. It's August. Yeah. Um, so I've talked to Jane Fister. She did send us an allocation of $80,000 to get us closer, but we're still missing the money from Eversource okay. and we have to do the final grant report. So I've been, I need to work with Allison Gager to talk about that. Okay. And then MVP, we, I provided the reporting documents the last couple of days of July. And then Andrew Smith and I are going back and back and forth about that because he needed some follow-up information. Okay. So those two things, are issues that could possibly hit free cash. So I want you to be aware of them. Um, Just to, before I forget, sure. uh, uh, there's a pilot program in Eversource and National Grid for geothermal. And, uh, you know, I've been really, was hesitant to pursue it for this reason, because they're so obnoxious to work with and it's so much effort. You know what they did? They changed their entire review process for these streetlight conversions. And literally right at the time that we were trying to get ours reviewed, mm -hmm. um, they, it actually, they were pretty helpful until we got to that sort of stop point where their review the process money? took four yeah, months. Where they it's, where's the, the money? Where is, <laughs> right, where's That's the money? That's when it slows That's up. That's why I was hesitant, you know, because we're trying to, you know, sort out the, the geothermal. Oh, shoot, here. Denise left. I was going to say, hey, Denise. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So anyway... I haven't seen it. If you have information about it, send it to me and okay. I can I can talk to Denise about it too. All right. Um, so oh, we, she's I, the one that told me about it because I'm Oh, so I'm she could send be, it to me. Yeah, I'm supposed to be following okay. up on all this stuff. But I was right. hesitant because you know they're they're so awful. All right. Next item. Is that it? Um all right. So we've got projects still going. There's litigation responses for a couple of items in front of the town that I've been working with council on. Yeah. Um, we've got other projects in play, like the new pro sale, the TIF. So what you should know about the TIF is we are working, there's some table documentation that Karen and Skip are working on. And that's really the estimate of what mm -hmm. the TIF would be for new pro mm -hmm. that has to go to the state. So what we did was I sent the draft agreement to Kevin Kuros, who is the regional um, MOBD director that's working on this project for us. And he sent me some comments back, Karen and Skip, and I don't know if Chuck and Frank are really like in depth into it, but I know that Skip and Karen are doing it. They were working on some of the tables. 
um, the intent is to get this to MOBD so they can vote in September right. with hopefully a pending approval. And that approval is pending based on the town's approval at town meeting. Right. And so this is one of the major articles you would see on a town meeting warrant. Okay. Um, so that's in play and that's gonna be a back and forth. That meeting of MOBD's directors is in September. So we're trying to iron out the, some of those details so that we can hopefully get a, a positive result, which is what both New Pro and the town want sure. to do, at yeah. least Absolutely. in my work is trying to help facilitate this. Because yep. it's you're looking at somewhere between 12 and $18 million investment. Yeah. So big, that's, big that's pretty significant. Yep. Be wonderful um, for the town. Again, fingers crossed the sale that happens on Friday. Yep. Hopefully we don't have any hiccups. Um, and then there's other daily work that we've been working on. Jen's been on vacation. Pat and I are sort of keeping things moving, but we've had, we have information that needs to go through with Maya, insurance information, and a bunch of other smaller things, contract follow-up, that sort of thing. So that's, that's sort of been in the background. Mm -hmm. um, and I have been trying to follow State House News a little closer because of the how how the end of the legislative session happened just can you just find out what the supplemental yep budget? i sent so after you asked carolyn asked me about this earlier this afternoon i sent an email to corinne and i copied natalie and joe so Corinne's hopefully out. one of them about the okay. supplemental budget Corinne's um, out. she's getting married i think so she's gone elaine, elaine is out oh elaine is out elaine oh i'm is sorry out. yes right. I knew I, i'm pretty sure so. that half Elaine's their team is oh gone. okay is that what's happening <laughs> It's a lot. So Elaine is out, yeah. but I sent something to Corinne. I copied Natalie and Joe because thank you. I'm just else trying to figure out the question. Yeah. Because we, what we want to do is we want to put some requests in for the supplemental budget. Yeah. Based on what's happening. Okay. And so Monday, I have a meeting with personnel. We're going to go over some job descriptions, introduce David Sharp as the new member representing finance committee. Yep. Um, got roped into that. So I have some, I have a couple of things I, I have to send the, out to them. The personnel. He's board. on, so he's on the finance committee, but they, they appointed him to act as the finance committee member to the personnel, personnel board. board. So, and yes, we still, just so in case anybody's listening. Quorum. So this is more of a quorum now? Yeah. So we're Perfect. closer to quorum. Right now, so Erica has resigned. We have Eric Farrell. We have Lisa Middens, Raloon Bialik. Now, David, um, did I miss Lisa? No, you didn't say, her. okay. So we still we need, need people. people. <laughs> and I think my conversation with Lisa is, they're very interested in us continuing to push information via social media that, that they would, that people, they really need the volunteers. Oh, sorry, make a um, post. And so what we have specific language, Jennifer and I talked about this before she went on vacation. We have language that Erica Ross had helped us develop. And I talked to Jennifer about you mean it. to request somebody? Yeah. Oh, to, okay. So we had pushed it out on our social media. Now we have the new website, so we're still learning that. But yeah. we had pushed it out on Facebook. And I think you had picked it up or Lisa oh, Middens picked maybe, it up for Deerfield now. Oh, okay, good. It's it just already been posted. Yeah. Okay, great. But we want to post again. We had done this a couple maybe months ago. Maybe we get an announcement. So right. right. So I was going to have Jennifer go back and get that announcement information and, and okay. do a blast. And so ha she'll, as soon as you see it, because I know you check yeah, your feed, right. your Facebook feed. So we would sort of try to coordinate that. We can't get directly to Deerfield now. Somebody that's right. on Deerfield now would get yep, to it. Yep, exactly. So, and Lisa's it's willing to do town. it too. It's not a town thing. Right, it's yep. not a town thing. So you've got those things. Um, I do have to tell the board, I did ask Trevor about this independently. So I have a medical appointment on the 18th. That's later in the afternoon. I won't be able, I don't think I'll be done by the time the meeting starts at mm -hmm. six. That's okay. So I, I it, talked to Jennifer. I think Jennifer's gonna cover it for me. Um, we're, we're just, it's the DPH emergency management stuff, right? No, it's, um, we're just, it's our epi. Our, That's it. Our the epidemiologist F is going to discuss our, our past data. That's the okay. 18th, the Thursday? It's a Thursday, Thursday. Yeah. And okay. then you guys at have a meeting on the 22nd as well. At six o'clock. If you could send me a link so I can send it to Jack. Oh, send him the, okay. Is this a Zoom meeting? Yes. Yes. So oh, it's, this is a remote meeting. 
if I recall, correct me if I'm wrong, Carolyn. I don't have it on my calendar. No, I didn't no we it. haven't published it. We hadn't published it. I had to, I had to verify that right. Darius was available um, and that Jack was available. We had sort of picked this date as maybe, you know. Possibility. Yeah, yeah Possibility. last okay. week when we talked to there, This John. will not be a long meeting because we don't really have any action. Okay. But it, it will give us something, yep. some information. Mm -hmm. And we need to think about what we're going to try to do for the school year. So can you, so it's, it's just going to be, how do you want me to term the appearance? I need, I'm going to need the name and I'm going to need to know what it's, I It's call. Jack Sullivan. He is the epidemiologist um, in our public health excellence grant that we got our first public health excellence grant. Mm -hmm. that we I know he's going to go over the past data. Past data with this, the Board of Health, the Select Board. board of is health. it just COVID data or is it other data? No, it's just COVID data. Okay. Um, with us and Darius, and it's just it's going to be a small meeting because it's just it's just information. Okay. Um, but I think it's important that we get this information in the context of school. What what's happening for school? Okay. And we have a face to face with Darius because we have to figure out mm -hmm. what we're going to do. Okay. And so we had, in my mind, this was remote. Yeah, it is all it remote. Is. Okay. Yeah. Because the twenty second is the next meeting. That was another special meeting. That was that's in, an, it's in person. In person. Right. Here at the town hall. Right. Yep. And then I had so one question. And that's at five o'clock because I have a, a senior housing meeting at seven for financing. We're having a finance person come. Twenty second. Yes, eight twenty second, eight twenty two at five, at 5 p.m. I got yeah. that, and then the next regular meeting is the twenty fourth for the select yes. board, and but then wait. we have September seventh and twenty first. What? Wait, so Just wait. Sorry, I do that, and I'm trying to change that habit. It's really hard. Um, <laughs> I'm fifty one years old. It's a habit that's been around for a long time. So the question came across the email, and I know I sent it out to you guys, but I hadn't circled back around in a meeting. Um, the South County Senior Center Board of Oversight would like to meet with the select board. Could yeah. we do the 29th? It's another Monday. Okay, no, that's, that's fine. fine. Yeah. I um, think we already I already five said five or yes. six. Uh, August 29th. I would. Would yeah, you want to do down. remote or do you want to do? I, I already ha no. I already I said remote. Oh, well, is it six o'clock? Six o'clock remote. Okay. Right or five? I, don't, yes. I, I know I five. sent an email Did out. You have five. I had six, but I don't care either. Five either or, six. or. Okay. Six is fine. Just. Sometimes I get to work. It's you know. so the twenty ninth. So we have a few meetings here, but yes. I have to say it's good because I think we're addressing some of these issues. Yeah, getting them done, and then we our next other meetings yeah, I mean, are September seventh and the twenty first. Yeah, we need a couple single issue meetings here to get rid of some of this stuff. Yep. So that was. I just want to be able to confirm with my colleagues, and then there's one other thing. So I want to share the angst on this <laughs> Okay. I can't handle it anymore. Myself. Ooh, so myself. Tim, I was reading something today. Tim confirmed it. So I was reading, it was a comment from the governor about one of the bills in front of him. And he used the term Ajita, which is another term, I guess, for anxiety. Ajita, <laughs> Tim right? confirmed mm, yeah, it. I, I'm not sure if it's Ajita or Agita. Agita, it could be Agita. I, I, I didn't look at the pronunciation, but I thought it was interesting. So I used to work with an Italian guy in Worcester who was um, always using that expression in the in the newsroom, cutting floor, you know, yeah. like the page design. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I just thought that was kind of funny as an aside, but I w I'm choosing to share yeah. my, my anxious right. situation. Can't hang on exactly. to all of because there's always a little bit of things. I know. I'm anxious to I, end this meeting. Yeah. I am anxious to tell you I'm going on vacation. I'm anxious to say wonderful. The, the September good. 10th through the 17th, we will be physically out of town. So great. Are you sure? <laughs> I don't buy it. We're going to yeah. lock up your computer. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Steal your keys. Keys. No, see, yeah. the trick is going to be somebody's not stealing my phone from me because it's yeah. been you threatened know how before. We transfers. Do what transfers? We transfer. Is it? It's. Oh, it, so there was this. Um, I get, there was a pass through of documents that Carolyn received, and it was a type of of um, document drop prop program 
Neither one of us can do I this. If I forward it. it to you, can yeah. you see if you can sure. do it? Because we're I'm trying to print a 200 page document. And it's a, the the, it's a, the state so healthy that's... soil called we share. It's not yeah, yeah, yeah. dropbox. And, okay. And I'm sure that yeah, we can sign it up. open it to read it. Okay. Yeah, we couldn't, it's it so just kept cycling like it was loading and then it wouldn't come up. Yeah, let me know. I'll get, I'll look at it. Because, sure. you know, if one of us can down pull the documents onto something, then I don't, we can print I don't have a meeting there. for two weeks. So okay. I have two weeks yeah, we'll to get figure it, it out. Sure. But okay. I got to read it. And it's yeah, forward it on. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, so that's pretty much what I've got for, for you. All righty. Entertain a motion to adjourn. I will make that motion. We want to get out before eight o'clock. I'll second it. <laughs> All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nassai. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your week. Mm -hmm.